we're driving from Nevada to Utah. Along the way, we'll stop by Cathedral Gorge and Ward Charcoal Ovens. We'll spend the night at a town called Ely. Then on to the Beehive State. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. After a fun time in Rachel, now the road beckons once again. Nevada is one of those states that might be underrated. It is definitely not just deserts and casinos, let me tell you. There's a lot of natural beauty here, and in all our travels, we've barely scratched the surface. Today we're going to a couple of places we've never been to before, although I think the drive alone is worth the price of admission. The price of gas, at least. It is such a unique, desolate beauty. All these expansive valleys by mountains. This is the Great Basin, an area that encompasses nearly the entire state of Nevada and beyond, defined by mountain ranges and valleys or basins. A watershed that never reaches the ocean. It drains to the salty basins and lakes where it eventually seeps into the ground or evaporates, like a bathtub with no drain. Arriving in Caliente, let's stop off the tank because you never know when the next gas station will be. Not a bad looking town, which by the way we were gonna go to Bryce Canyon from here, but apparently it is covered in snow and most of the trails are closed, so we might have a change of plan here. We're getting close to our first point of interest. Here we are, Cathedral Gorge State Park. Let's pay our fee and continue, which by the way is $5 for Nevada residents and $10 for us. Ooh, this looks promising. Too bad it is so cloudy. Let's figure out what we want to do. Let's park here for a moment. It turns out this is overflow dry camping but there's day-use parking a little farther down the road. There are a handful of trails, and we're going to do some of the shorter ones. Let's see what this tower is. It seems historic. Here's the historic water tower. It was constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s. Let's park right here in the day use area and explore. Well, change of plan. <laughs> uh, Bryce Canyon is partially closed due to snow, so we're gonna <clears throat> go somewhere else. We're gonna continue north towards Ely. But first, look at this, take a look at this place. Cathedral Gorge. Let's explore, explore a little bit. Let's check out the cathedral slots, which are like a maze of all these small slot canyons.
I had no idea about this place. Whoever recommended it, thank you. This is awesome. person could get lost back here. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I want to go any farther. This is really cool. Whoa. It's a muddy mess here. You know, we've had an unusual amount of rain in Nevada, as you probably saw. So, check out this. I guess they, they have a stick up there holding it together. And uh, you almost feel like you could get lost in it. Whoop, it's a little slippery with all that mud. Um, I don't have my hardcore hiking shoes, but I have some hiking shoes. These are like everyday hiking shoes. But um, yeah, it's this is so cool, so pleasant with surprise. And lo it looks like the sun wants to come out. I mean, look at that view. Snow-capped mountains and and this keeps going. I mean, it's a lot of. <laughs> Uh, sun's coming out on and off. It's one of those days, very cloudy in Nevada. It is an amazing place, right? And totally off the radar, probably in part because we are literally in the middle of nowhere. The closest city is probably Las Vegas, and that's two and a half hours away. Next, we're going to hike to Miller's Point. It is supposed to be about half a mile with 100 feet of elevation gain. Look at that tiny little arch. the intro. Cool tree, look at all the little juniper fruit. There's another arch up there. We're doing the Miller Point. I think we're supposed to go all the way up there. Don't tell anybody, but I slept because we we went off trail. I slept on the on the mud. I don't think even with the good hiking shoes it would have made a difference. And uh, is that mud that sticks to you? Look at my yeah. And the camera is full of mud because you know <laughs> that's the hand that I used to. Uh... Anyway, it's an adventure. Life is an adventure. A grand adventure. You see that? <laughs> yeah, if these things didn't happen, we wouldn't have stories to tell. Now we're on the trail, on the right track. We were, we were walking through the wash. They 
stairs are the hardest part. Besides slipping and falling in the mud. Here's the view looking back. Up and up and up. And the views. I mean, I'm kind of bummed out that it is uh, not sunny because <laughs> this would look so much better. But it's where it is. And these stairs, not necessarily OSHA compliant here. Huh? Pretty steep. We're almost there. Almost there. Tiny little arch. Take a look at this place. I hear road noise. The road is right there. Don't be fooled by the apparent remoteness of this place. It's like everywhere you look, it's a beautiful rock formation. What a hidden gem this is. Now for the final stretch. We have conquered the summit, I think. Love to see all these distant, snow-capped mountains. By the way, if you want to come up here and don't want to do the hike, there's a road and a parking lot. But this is one of those trails where the destination is not really the best part. The journey through all these rock formations is where it's at. What goes up, must go down. I think the return trip is even more scenic, looking into the canyon. And I just noticed this triple arch. We couldn't go to Bryce Canyon, at least not today, but here we have hoodoos too. And we may still go to Bryce Canyon, just a little later. And we're back. Well, we're ready to depart here, but the Winnebago view that was parked here was covering this. And there's also such a... There's no camping there, so... There's no camping in this area. The campground seems to be full. Well, I don't know, we didn't... Check it out. This is some of those old structures here. Pretty cool, it's a... They use fire pit. That's the historic tower. All right. Let's do it. All right, let's check out this other area here. There's supposed to be more slot canyons. And uh, by the way, this seems to be overflow uh, camping. But we're already, you know, I made a reservation at a full hookup site. Now, this is another pay station if you want to pay here. This seems to be a slot canyon right here. Yes, it is. Let's see how far up we can go. It's a little bit slippery. This is it. This is as far as we can go on this one. That's pretty cool. Now for the return. I'm gonna put the camera away and use both my hands because this part right here 
going down. It's very slippery. And now the sun came out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's as much as I want to do today. But take a look at that. Take, take a look at this landscape now. Yeah, the sun is out. You can see all the texture on the rock. See all these slot canyons everywhere. Unfortunately, time's up. But I'm gonna, I'm, you know, on this trip, generally when I visit a place, I remove the star from my Google map. I think this place, I'm gonna keep it pinned because I wouldn't mind staying at that campground for a couple of nights one of these days. Hidden gem here in Nevada. This video is sponsored by RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. RVMattress.com is a Brooklyn bedding brand known for top-of-the-line comfort and quality. Plus, they have their own factory in Arizona and ship conveniently to you for free anywhere in the U.S. They offer different firmness options and heights, dimensions, even RV-specific and non-traditional sizes to fit right into your lifestyle. When you're searching for a mattress for an RV, first, it's gotta fit, right? And as you may know, many RVs come with non-standard mattress sizes like our short queen here, 60 by 74. And then it's gotta be comfortable because let's face it, RV stock mattresses are many times not the greatest. Here we have a signature hybrid firm with the Glacier Tech cooling technology. And we've had it for a while now and it fits perfectly. And it is so comfortable. I mean, much better than the stock mattress. The quality of your sleep is very important, and now we wake up refreshed, ready for a new day of adventures. It is very easy to buy online. Free shipping, as I said, comes right up to your doorstep, vacuum sealed, rolled up inside a box, and even though our trailer is tiny, it was still pretty easy to get it on the bed. And don't roll it. Pretty cool how it inflates in a matter of seconds. As I said earlier, Brooklyn Bedding owns its own manufacturing facility in Arizona, so they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price with no middlemen bringing up the cost. Designed in Arizona by master craftsmen who have been building mattresses for over 25 years. And it is fiberglass free. With your RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, you get a 120 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. We love our RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and I think you would love it too. So if you're looking for a new bed, visit rvmattress.com slash travelingrobert or scan the QR code to enjoy an exclusive discount on your mattress with code travelingrobert. But that's not all. Be sure to explore their memorial sales through the month of May. These are going to be some of the biggest sales of the year, so don't miss this chance to enhance your sleep quality. Visit rvmattress.com today and remember once May is over, so are these incredible deals. We're going north on US 93 towards a town called Illy. Made a last minute change of plan and booked a full hookup site at the KOA. We may still pass by Bryce Canyon tomorrow or the day after, but it all depends on how deep is the snow. Nevada, who knew you would be so beautiful? We can see mountains in every direction. Here we are at the junction with US 50, the loneliest road in America, which we're going to take west here for a little bit.
Here we're going to make a left onto a dirt road, because we're going to Ward Charcoal Ovens State Historic Site. Here we are. Let's go check out the, the ovens. But first, we have fresh snow. Let's see if I, I can clean my shoes in the snow. Came back to the car because this is also a, a Nevada State Park. And the pass that we got at the previous place, at the other state park, doesn't say which state park it is. So I'm assuming you pay once those $10 and you can visit as many state parks as you want, right? I'm assuming. <laughs> the main thing to do here is seeing the ovens, but there's also a network of hiking and ATV trails. There's fishing, there's a campground. So there's a lot more to see, for sure. Hmm, a bandit hideout. So that's how it worked. It's like a huge pizza oven. Like an igloo. Echo! This is a little bit slippery. We shall be careful. Yeah, this is ice. Ice, ice baby. Yeah, this one has a slightly bigger chimney up there. I think they are all the same, but very cool. From the, from the 1800s, right? I forget exactly which year, but we'll... We'll do some research. The ovens were used from 1876 through 1879 to help process rich silver ore that was discovered in this area. Then they were abandoned and used as shelter for travelers and maybe even bandits. Bandidos! That's the chimney up there. So echoey. Oh, there's a creek and there's a trail. Well, this is it's a culvert, I guess, so you go over the creek. Very cool. We just came to see the ovens. <laughs> you are here. It's a half mile trail, it's very easy, but we're gonna go to the campground and uh, maybe go to Ili, we don't know yet. We don't know if we're gonna go into Willy tonight or not. Very windy in Nevada. Apparently they only operated for three years from 1876 to 1879, you know, during the, the silver boom. And then, um, no, stagecoach bandits. That's who used them. Well, there's a view. This will be our home for the night, with this magnificent mountain views. A little bit of road noise, but Minitini 4 is fairly well insulated.
Last night, the camera caught something really strange. Does anybody know what those lines could be? Meteor shower, perhaps? Let me tell you, very strange things happen out here. Having reached the westernmost point of our route, today we officially begin the journey home. But slowly, we're going to spend a significant time in one of my favorite states, Utah, and then back to Texas. Driving to the Oh no, we're gonna have to turn around. It turns out, rookie mistake. <laughs> I just realized we're on the loneliest road in America and there's not another gas station for, I don't know, like 200 miles, <laughs> it's a long way. And uh, we have a quarter tank, so we're not gonna make it. So we have to go back to Ely, with Ely. So Ely is gonna finally see Ely. Different spelling, but you know, you know how it is. As I said, since we had to drive back anyway, let's just drive around Ely a little bit. We're not going to do anything here, not today. Utah is definitely calling. We have to be in Moab in about a week. We're going to save this for when we do the entire US 50 from Ocean City, Maryland to Sacramento, California, which is gonna happen maybe next year. Ely here, by the way, pretty historic town, founded as a stagecoach station when copper was discovered in 1906. The main thing to do here is the Railroad Museum, which we'll definitely visit when we return. Hotel Nevada, here on the left, was built in 1929, and for two years it held the title as the tallest building in Nevada. I guess then Las Vegas happened. And that was pretty much the whole town. Let's turn around. Cool town, it's got character and murals. This looks kind of familiar, and I realize I took this same route back in 2020. That year, it was so smoky due to wildfires that you could barely see the mountains. I guess this would be the way to Great Basin National Park. But we're not going there either. Just like that, we're leaving Nevada and entering Utah, the Beehive State. This is also such an incredible drive. Once again, the area is defined by expansive valleys and mountain ranges as we make our way to the eastern edge of the Great Basin. And I think this rivals some of the most beautiful and striking landscapes, the better known ones of Colorado, California, or Montana. This is incredible. The road we're on, by the way, Utah State Route 21, also known as the Illy Highway. Just in case you wanna drive it someday. Up and down up and down. We've seen more cows than humans. It 
Some of these look like paintings. Okay, here's the plan for Utah. We're going to do Scenic Highway 12 again. We've done it before and it never gets old. But this time I'm going to try and visit the places we have skipped in previous years. Mainly Grand Staircase Escalante, Capitol Reef. We're going to do some hikes and eventually we'll make it to Moab. But I'm going to save all that for the next few videos here. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my